Hi folks, um, this is my channel. Welcome to it. Uh, it's called Hacks Life. A little play on life hacks, but my name is uh, Hack, and where my nickname has been since I was about 14, and I'm a lot older now. So uh, I'm going to be focusing on instruments, so this is going to be the star of the show today. And uh, I may throw in a few videos from time to time of other things that I fix and repair and hack in my life. Um, and, you know, it's uh, hopefully of interest to some of you guys. And, uh, you know, maybe we can kind of all enjoy some of my little hobbies and pastimes. Um, this is a 2000 Fender Telecoustic that I picked up the other day. And I've been working on it. Um, I haven't got all of the work to show you because... Uh, I did some of that before I started this channel, but in the future I'll be showing you some of the tips and tricks that I do to some guitars. I've never worked on a Telecoustic before, so this is a new experience. Um, these have a bolt-on neck, which is kind of an interesting feature, and plastic back. Pretty much a standard Telecaster neck, maybe a little chunkier C profile than normal. I don't know, it's kind of medium. But, um, you know, a, basically a thin, I'm not even sure what kind of top that is. Honestly, it feels like balsa wood. But, um, sort of a piezo electric pickup and a set of uh, EQ controls on the side. And, uh, you know, Pretty cool. This one is, uh, well, it had some issues when I got it, to be, to be frank. It had a serious up bow in the neck when I got it. Um, I've been working with it quite a bit to correct that. And uh, I think the problem was due primarily to the fact that somebody had like a set of heavy gauge, like 12 or 13 strings on this thing. And left it on there under tension, just sitting probably leaned up against a wall or something for a very long time. And it was not well cared for. And long story short, the action was a half an inch high. So, and also <laughs> the neck angle was weird. Um, I'll get to that in a little bit because I've got to actually um, do a little tweak there before I put some strings on this thing. Um, but I got it pretty cheap because of that issue and because of this issue here, which is a crack in the top. Um, the first thing I did when I got this guitar was I took the neck off and uh, I verified that the crack does not go all the way into the neck block. And uh, since I have to take this neck off one more time anyway. I'll go ahead and show you what that neck block looks like. All right, so I had the neck off. Jeez, didn't think it's saw does not fall out of it, but anyway. Um, it's a standard 21 fret tele neck with, uh, you know, those vintage thin frets. Um, it's got a four millimeter truss rod adjustment. More about that in a second. And it's got some pretty nice little, little mini button tuners on it. I mean, they're nothing special, but they're not horrible. And um, this is the neck joint. So the neck joint has these weird, I don't know, it's, not, it's, it's kind of a plastic, maybe aluminum washer on uh, some really long and aggressive uh, neck screws that go all the way through a more or less particle board uh, neck block. Now, I can't swear that it's particle board, but it, it, it really looks like some sort of really lightweight wood at best. Yeah, maybe it's basswood, maybe. It just looks really strange. Um, and there is a tiny metal shim in here from the factory to uh, make this thing perform. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to show you was if you can see that neck crack 
that extends right there. It only goes through this, I don't know, eighth of an inch top layer and does not extend down into the neck joint itself. So that's really good news. Um, if it had cracked beyond that, it would have been a structural problem. And as it stands, I think it was just, it looks to me like it's just poor routing in this corner of the neck pocket. There's a little bit of a high ridge there compared to the other side. And I think it's just where they drilled in to make this round portion of the pocket and didn't drill down far enough or didn't route down far enough into the neck pocket itself. Uh, but anyway, um, so what I have done, and I'll have to show you this on a future video, but I chased this crack with super glue. I just use really standard um, Harbor Freight. <laughs> you, can, you can use any super glue, but just uh, cyanoacrylate glue uh, thin enough that it wicks down into the crack. And then once it builds up uh, and fills the void and, and stands a little bit proud, um, I then go in and chase that with a razor blade. Um, basically, if you take cellophane and wrap it around two edges of the razor blade and use the middle as a scraper, you can put this down over a crack on a guitar and scrape that extra super glue away. You can do this to fill uh, little dents too. Just take it and, and you'll want to stand it up pretty much 90 degrees and scrape it away until it's flat and then come in with uh, like a little block and a piece of wet sandpaper and uh, just go down through your various grits until you get that nice and smooth and then come in and polish it with a, a little you know polishing wheel I tend to use like a a little buffing wheel on a drill um, but one of these days I'll have to step up to a a larger size high-speed buffer um, anyway long story short with this filled this this uh, binding ring is what I was worried about it did move a little bit but it's not gonna crack any any worse um, I didn't have any red paint to make this match very well but that's okay you would always know that there was a repair there because of the binding the way it wiggled and um, it's not gonna crack any worse uh, and it's a 20 plus year old guitar. I think it's, you know, it's bound to have some dents and dings. I did take out some scratches. There were some string scratches here. And then another scratch down here that was kind of random. And there's still just a little divot here. I don't know if somebody hit it with their music cable and they were, you know, trying to plug into the little piezo pickup back here or what. But anyway, there's a little ding still there. I'm going to leave it. Um, the nice thing about these guitars is they're pretty indestructible on the sides of the back and uh, the bottom and whatnot because of the plastic, um, almost like an ovation style material um, there. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's got this speckled pattern even that would hide scratches. Um, I don't know if you can even see that. Eh, maybe you can. Got kind of a speckled pattern. Looks like uh, confetti or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me get this neck back on and I'll get this reset. I just wanted to double check that my shim was in the right place because it's just standing just a tiny bit proud of the bridge. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get the neck mounted. Okay, so I've got my neck mounted back and um, I've got a way that I check straightness of the neck and basically it involves a, a ruler with indentations where the frets would be. Um, you know, you need to use some sort of a metal tool to do this because you don't want uh, to use a wooden ruler that might warp or whatever. This is actually just a Harbor Freight, um, you know, it was actually a uh, 48 inch, or sorry, 40, yeah, I guess it was 48, 48 inch ruler that uh, I cut in half and 
ended up uh, using the other half for a Gibson scale. But at any rate, this is my 25 and a half inch scale. Uh, this is a standard fender scale. And uh, if I check the straightness here, it's difficult to see, but there's really no gap in between the ruler and the fretboard. If there is, it's very tiny. Um, and I've got these, you know, thousands of an inch feeler gauges and I've checked it out and it's, it's not very much at all. The, uh, the, the point is, you know, uh, one of the problems with this guitar is that I can get the neck to flat, but I cannot get it into any bit of a back bow at all. And I find that a little bit strange. Basically, the truss rod, you know, you tighten the truss rod and it's supposed to put backward tension on the neck. It puts backward tension on it until it gets almost straight and then no further. And that happens about halfway through the truss rod's travel on this guitar. And I thought maybe it just wasn't developing enough tension. So I ended up pulling the truss rod nut out and I put a washer under it that was probably an eighth of an inch thick, put that back in and you know, put the nut back in, tighten it back up and it does the same thing. It gets, it gets to a certain point and it'll pull the neck straight and it won't pull it any straighter. So, you know, I, if any of you guys have dealt with these things in, in uh, your shop or, um, you know, at, at home and you know anything about these truss rods and whether they're capable of pulling a neck into a back bow, uh, let me know. But this one doesn't seem to be, and I'm hoping that's not a problem. I've got a set of extra light acoustic strings coming for this thing. So I believe they're 10 to 47s. I'm going to be installing those, and uh, I've got a new set of bridge pins that I actually got too. Um, and what I'm hoping is that if a up bow is introduced, that I can pull this thing at least back to straight with a tiny bit of relief. Um, and we'll talk, we'll talk about neck relief when I do that, but I'm hoping I can pull it back to straight, um, just with the tension or with the adjustment that I have. Like I'm thinking this truss rod can go straight, but no further, if that makes any sense at all. So, um, and I'm hoping I don't have to address this nut because this nut was abused by those giant strings that were on here. And I'm hoping I can get away with the tens on there as it is. We'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, uh, that's where this thing stands. Um, I think next I'll try to get some strings put on it. Um, you know, I guess I will show you one more thing before I do that. You know, I, I talked a little bit about the Harbor Freight uh, ruler and how to make uh, you know, scale, I basically just take a magic marker and, you know, mark off every fret. Then I take a file, grind in the, the half rounds, and have a tool. Um, that cost me like $4 for two different scale rulers, which, you know, I know they're kind of cheap on eBay, and eBay or Amazon, but still, um, I, I sometimes you'll see me using things I have on hand to make things that I need. Um, for example, this little neck uh, cradle, uh, I ended up making this the other day just because I'm, I've been working on a lot more guitars here recently and I, I didn't have anything to support the, uh, the neck of a guitar while I worked on it. Um, so put that together with some spare wood. Right now I've been using a just a rag to protect the neck against the cradle, um, but I'll have to figure out some, like, I don't know, maybe leather or something to put over the top of that, uh, just to protect it a little bit more, maybe some felt. And uh, I'm gonna get myself a little bit better pad to set under the guitars than this towel here. Or maybe just a bigger towel, I don't know. But um, I actually kinda like the towel because I can take it away if I get some, like, sawdust or metal shavings or solder or something on them, I can throw them in the wash and get a lot of that stuff out and uh, reuse them. So anyway, um, hope you're enjoying the video so far and we'll get some strings on this thing next.
Okay, folks, so I realized uh, yesterday that um, I forgot to show you the bridge positioning trick and um, the neck angle. And so basically, I just wanted to show that really quickly. Everything I've read says an acoustic guitar, when you lay a straight edge across the top of the frets, I'm not using the indent indented side of my ruler, I'm just using a straight side. When you lay the straight edge across, it should just barely clear the top of your, or, or basically be even with the top of your uh, saddle. So the wood on your saddle, not the saddle itself. So that's the situation I've got here now that I've got the neck angle set correctly. Uh, I've got the ruler laying right across the frets and I can just barely clear that saddle and touch it um, right in the middle, which is good and fine with me. Um, couldn't get it any closer than that. So Now, um, I'll be on to the strings. The other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is that I actually made a quick modification to my neck uh, cradle here. Um, I just realized when I was working with it yesterday that you know with the height that it was previously I could not access the top of the frets so now I've got it where it's just got a much smaller indentation in it um, so where the, when the necks resting in it I can actually get to both sides of the frets so if I want to do some filing or whatever I want to do checking clearances you know first nut first fret action that kind of thing um, I can do that so, anyway, um, I'll move on and uh, get some strings on this thing. I've got this set of, I don't know even how to pronounce that, but I'm going to guess at Didario. Um, but I've got this set of 80-20 bronze uh, extra light gauge acoustic strings, 10 to 47. That's what I've read is the best for teleacoustics, so that's what I'm going with. So. I'm going to cut the video here and uh, start stringing these um, and I'll, I'll show you the last couple. So on uh, these acoustic bridge pins, um, they, they have a, a channel on one side. That channel is supposed to go toward the neck. Um, that way when the string goes through the, the bridge pin, it has, it has a place to sort of ride in that groove and uh, the ball is actually supposed to slip up and uh, rest you know basically on the saddle with the bridge pin holding it in um, you know sort of like that um, underneath now these Daddario strings oh by, by the way I wouldn't normally uh, put all these in in advance before I you know put them through the tuners but I was just checking out these new bridge pins that I got these are brand new uh, bridge pins because I broke the originals getting them out um, there were some really heavy gauge strings that made it very hard to remove the original bridge pins and I broke one and you can't buy one uh, you gotta buy a whole set so anyway um, these strings are actually color coded which actually is kinda cool so you know a, You've got six different colors, and uh, they correspond to the the balls on the end of the string. Um, so, pretty simple. Um, acoustic guitars have four wound strings, um, as opposed to electrics that tend to have three. And um, yeah, I mean it's pretty straightforward. Um, follow the color code. Like the purple one is the B string. Kind of get it. You know, go ahead and stick it in the hole and get it riding that channel and then make sure that it's up against the saddle before you push the bridge pin all the way in. That's pretty much it. So, easy peasy. That's it. So, um, when I do these strings, what I tend to do is I'll run the string down to the nut. I'll run it through the hole in the, in one tuner. And 
and I'll cut it off roughly. Maybe I can zoom this in where you can see this a little better. Let me try it. So normally when I do strings, I'll run the string through the nut and through the tuner that I'm going to, and then I'll measure out roughly two tuners, two and a half tuners, back the string up that far, and then start my winding. And when you do that, it gives you, you know, two or two or three wraps, which is pretty ideal. I just got this little string winder. I, I hope it works well. <laughs> yeah, that, that works pretty decent. So I'll tend to get it like started. Then I'll go ahead and make sure that any of my leftover string is going to clear the top of the other string, the, the rest of the string as it's going over, and then I'll finish my winding. Sometimes on this first string, this E string, it wants to fight you. And what I like is for every winding to go under the previous winding, and so sometimes you have to force it down because of the angle on the, the very first uh, tuner here. There we go. One down, five to go.
All right, well, that's the end of the stringing process. Um, I've got to get her tuned up, and I realized I left my tuner in the other room, so I've got to go get that. And uh, I'm optimistic about this action. It looks like it's going to work out, but we'll see. Um, got to get it tuned up to pitch. Well, I fibbed a little bit. I said I was going to go get my tuner. And I started looking at this action as I was tuning it a little bit by ear. And uh, it's not, not exactly where I want it. Um, and I don't really know what's going on with this thing. Um, but I, I will say, you know, I've been struggling with this truss rod. And it is acting the way I thought it was going to act. So I am able to straighten the neck out under tension. Not completely, but it's it's better than it was when I started uh, tightening this again after after the strings were added. Um, I've got to spend a little bit more time tightening this, and um, I think I'm gonna adjust the neck angle because I really don't want to adjust the saddle uh, height. I could, I could shave some off the bottom of the saddle, but this thing's a bolt-on neck for a reason, so I'm going to try kicking the neck angle up with a shim and see what happens. Um, yeah, so I'll turn the camera off just for a minute. Um, I've got a 4 mil Allen, and uh, you know, it's real simple. It's real simple. You just, you know, get it fed into the nut and tighten it up. And uh, I just don't want you to see me cranking on it. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right. So <laughs> I've done so much of this thing, I forgot where I left off. But uh, basically, I have now uh, tuned it to pitch. I've got the uh, the truss rod adjusted. The neck has just the right amount of relief in it, but the truss rod's maxed out. So, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to disclose that to the next owner. Um, but it does work fine at this point. Um, just don't know, like, in the future if that's going to be a problem. But it is what it is, as they say. Um, but I don't know if you can even see... Probably not too simple to see that. But, you know, middle of the neck, there's a little relief there, but it's completely acceptable. And, you know, I've checked it with a capo, um, and it's a little more than 10 thousandths, which, you know, it's not. Uh, You know, basically what you do to check neck relief is you put a capo at the first fret and then you fret the neck somewhere down here near the end of the neck like 17th or you can even fret it at the 21st fret. Then you measure the action with an action ruler at you know probably the 8th fret or usually you know somewhere in eighth, somewhere 8th, 10th, something like that. That Usually where the most relief is. Try to get yourself somewhere around 10 to 12 thousandths is where I usually like to have them. Um, if I'm, you know, doing a real shredder guitar, maybe it's five thousandths, but, um, this one, this one being, you know, a little bit more than 10 doesn't bother me at all. Um, and then I guess the other thing I did was just, you just generally check the action at the 12th fret. Um, by the way, if you don't have one of these rulers, get one. Um, this is just a string action ruler and it's got little gradations on there. Um that show you exactly how many thousands high the action is. And uh, they've got all kinds of little measurements on there. But on a acoustic, there's even a little handy chart on the back. And it tells you that the string action at the 12th fret on an acoustic guitar should be between 79 thousandths and 98 thousandths of an inch. So let's call that. A 
calling that right at a hundred. So we're two thousandths over. And then the uh, first fret, first string should be between fifty nine thousandths and seventy nine thousandths. It's right at eighty. So um, I forgot to mention, I did take the neck off and put a small shim under there. And that's how I got it to this point. I may have to think about this for a minute. I may try to take a couple thousandths off the saddle. Um, basically, you can pop the saddle out and shave the bottom of it. I may try to do that um, since we're so close. All I need is a few thousands. So uh, real quick, just I think I mentioned that the truss rod was maxed out and I checked the neck relief for the capo but I just want to show you what that looks like. Um, you put a capo down here at the first fret across the uh, well basically between the nut and the first fret then um, let me adjust this you take the guitar and you fret it around the 17th fret or you know sometimes I use the, the even the 21st um, you take your little ruler here and then you put it up next to this top string and you can check and see what it reads. This one's reading between 10 and 20 thousandths. Um, if you want to get exact, you have to get a set of feeler gauges. Now feeler gauges come in all shapes and sizes, but This is a Starrett set of feeler gauges. There's my 12 thousandths. Yeah, that's perfect. So when I run the feeler gauge under the 12 thousandths, I can see it raise the fret, or raise the string off the fret ever so slightly and there's just a little bit of drag where you can feel. Now I'm doing that at the 8th fret. Um, I like to pick somewhere in the middle of the relief for the neck. You know, there's not much relief where the neck bolts to the body. That's That part of the neck stays flat. It really starts to bow up about halfway in between um, the 1st fret and the point where it meets the body. So about halfway in there is where you want to check. So 7th fret, 8th fret, you know, right in there. And uh, we're we're living somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I would say, 11 thousandths. Uh, so that's good enough for me. And, uh, man, there just is nothing left of that truss rod adjustment. So I'm worried about that for the future of this guitar. But it's... Uh, an interesting sounding guitar. I did plug it up and mess with it a little bit. Um, I guess I'll try to Let's see if I can do that now. interesting about this guitar is the uh, EQ adjustments seem to make a huge difference because I mean you think about it like that's the bass adjustment I mean it really adds a lot to those top strings treble adjustment does something similar Uh, probably 
affects the higher strings more. And they'll flat out kill them if you take it down to negative 12. So it's an interesting guitar, I mean. It's uh, something for another day, but I guess I'll play around with the action a little bit more. Um, but this one is about ready to roll out of here. So thank you guys for hanging with me. Um, hope to have another video posted for you soon.